So have the rules of the game changed when it comes to A-level physics exams? Now I'm making this video in part inspired by a video that Bison Maths did recently. You can find a link to it up here. And he talked about the A-level maths and A-level further maths exams and how in recent years the grade boundaries have got higher. So that means you need to get more marks on the paper to get the higher grades. And if you haven't seen the video already, go and watch it. I'm sure if you're watching this, you're probably doing A-level maths as well. So when it comes to A-level physics, what's actually happened over the last few years? Well, what I've got here is I've got a huge amount of data based on the grade boundaries for all of the main exam boards that students are sitting in England. And what I've done is I've compiled it into these documents and you can find all of these over at alevelphysicsonline.com. You can go to the past paper finder and at the bottom of the page, you'll find all of these documents for you to download to use as you're revising. But basically what we can look at is the trend over time. So we're just gonna pick OCRA first of all. Um, and what we found was that in 2017, this was the first year that students sat the exams for this specification. And actually, I think that the trend is kind of replicated with AQA and Edexcel as well. Is that in the first year, the grade boundaries were relatively low, and that's because it was a different format of exam paper, so the students couldn't really prepare for it that well. So if we look at OCRA, for example, looking at paper one, the modelling physics paper, um, and we'll just look at the A stars as kind of like the indication. Um, in 2017, you needed 81, but the next year you needed 83 and even 88. And this is as people got more used to the paper, they had more past papers to practice with, the grade boundaries went up, which meant that effectively the students were doing better and getting more marks on those paper. However, 2020 changed everything. This was when COVID happened, the big exams were cancelled, and although there were grade boundaries for 2020, these exams weren't sat in the summer. Some of them were sat later in the year, so it wasn't as big a cohort. And actually what we found was that over time, the grade boundaries actually went down. And this was in part because of all the disruption due to COVID. Um, and, you know, it might be the fact that some of the questions just weren't answered that well. Students didn't have the full education experience in school. And actually, interestingly enough, with OCRA, if you look at uh, the last couple of years, the grade boundaries have got lower. And that's rep replicated with modelling physics. Um, exploring physics, the grade boundaries actually went up. Uh, and then if we look at the last one, unified physics, uh, the grade boundaries, they sort of just kind of hover up and down. But I would say, looking at this, this data in particular, there's not really a clear trend. Trend. Sometimes they go up, sometimes they go down, but they kind of tend to be around the 50, 55. If we look at um, AQA, which I know a lot of you, if you're doing mock exams based on the 2024 papers, you will be crying at the moment in frustration. Um, AQA have had a couple of papers, probably three papers, which were just not well written for students to actually show what they knew. So again, uh, looking at paper one for AQA, uh, we found that as time went on after that new specification was introduced, the grade boundaries went up as people got used to it. They then dropped down in 2020. And actually, they've actually been going down, which tells me that the papers tend to be getting harder rather than easier. So paper one, uh, we're kind of sort of still about 60, 63, 59. Paper two, um, it's dropped from like a high of 69 uh, in 2019 down to 55 last year. And then if we look at paper three, um, we sort of go from like 29, we went down to 26, 25, and then 24 last year was a bit easier at 32. So there's quite a variation. Um, the thing that hasn't really varied too much actually are the optional topics for AQA, like astrophysics, uh, medical physics, engineering physics, that seems pretty staple. And I would say that um, looking at the grade boundaries for the AQA optional topic, bit of a mouthful there, um, those papers have tended to be fairly consistent year on year. Now, what I would say is that unlike maths, where it seems the grade boundaries seem to be going up and up every year, for A-level maths in particular, I would say that with A-level physics, the grade boundaries are relatively low. As in, you only need to be getting about 60% often to get an A star. And that tells me that a lot of the questions can actually be quite tricky to actually get all of the marks which are there. So I would say 
that the game hasn't really changed significantly. Having done lots and lots of past papers recently, I would say that every single exam paper has a question that I couldn't get full marks on because it was just quite tricky to actually answer that within the time available. And sometimes the mark schemes are quite specific about certain key words that you needed to get in your answer. However, the majority of questions I answered, having done lots and lots of past paper questions, were fairly standard. You know, they asked about the same things repeatedly, about, you know, how to measure the diameter of a wire, how to time something which was oscillating with simple harmonic motion. There's probably the majority of the questions are standard staple physics, and it's only a couple of exam questions on each paper which are really, really difficult. The thing I would say is that having done all of the different exam board questions, I found that the AQA papers took longer, especially when it came to the multiple choice questions, and therefore you need to be really careful about your time management. And actually, I think I probably preferred the Edexcel questions because they were a lot more straightforward and they seem to be very well set out and actually about quite interesting experiments. So personally, I actually preferred the Edexcel papers compared to the OCR and AQA ones. So have the rules of the game changed? I don't think they have. I would say that although there will always be some hard questions every year in every single paper, broadly speaking, the papers I've been doing are still fairly similar to what I was doing maybe five, six, seven years ago. And therefore, the thing that you've got to remember is if you want to do well in your exams coming up, don't get worried about questions that you can't do, because there's always going to be questions on every single paper that students find really difficult. Concentrate on just the basic knowledge, and that's just, you know, understanding what's in the specification, knowing your definitions, being really good at setting out your calculations, and making sure that you just get into good exam technique of really watching the time, and if you're spending too long on a question, you've got to leave it and come back to that harder question towards the end so you can get all of the easy marks which are available on each paper. So there we go. Uh, like I say, if you want to download these uh, to use as you're doing more past papers in the future, just find my past paper finder over at alevelphysicsonline.com.